These are transputers. They're from uh, the 80s and uh, pin grid array, ceramic package. And they're really interesting processors. The actual processor itself is stack based. Their main feature really was that they've got links. They were designed for parallel processing and uh, there's links built in hardware which means you can join one of these transputers to four other transputers or other hardware that handles the link protocol. So each of these has four independent links which are serial data links. Very simple protocol and sending and receiving on those links is actually built into the instructions in the CPU. So that's what a transputer looks like logically. There's a CPU and then four links each of which is a serial data out and a serial data in. Now I've wanted to fiddle with these for quite a while and I've got a couple here but I haven't built them into a circuit yet. I'm not actually sure that these are going to work because they're marked prequal and there were some wiring differences with the prequal chip so I need to investigate that. And the other problem with them is they're pretty expensive. Um, they're difficult to get hold of. There aren't a lot of them around I suppose. And um, when they do come up for sale they do cost quite a lot of money so I was thinking and uh, recently this has uh, appeared now, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico and um, that chip there the RP2040 <coughs> which is what these are is uh, a pretty powerful chip. Now uh, within the chip there's a couple of ARM cores, some some memory, uh, some RAM and uh, to actually get it working you need some flash and it's, the flash is external from this chip so you can have whatever size you want. There's two mega flash on here which is a lot. It's a lot more than the original transputer. Now uh, one interesting feature of the uh, Raspberry Pi 2040 are the PIOs, which are programmable IOs, and they're hardware, little tiny hardware processors. They're called state machines, but they're more like processors. And they sit between the GPIO and the processor, and they can perform little tiny tasks, not massively complicated, but enough to do almost any protocol you want, really. And they are fast and they run independently of the CPU. So that's pretty similar, I thought, to the uh, transputer links. So, if you take a Raspberry Pi 2040 and you wire it up, you can actually get it to look very much like a transputer. So we've got the CPU here, the 2040. There are two PIO blocks, PIO 0 and PIO 1 and each block has four state machines. Now, <laughs> very neatly, that maps almost exactly to a transputer because you've got the state machine for doing the serial data out and a state machine for doing serial data in. And uh, with four of those per PIO, that gives you four links, eight serial data lines. So I was thinking we can probably turn this into a transputer. Now about well less than four pounds for one of these. That's that's pretty cheap. So you could you could do ten of these linked together for forty pounds, which is much cheaper than trying to buy old uh, transputers and uh, build the hardware and hook them up. And uh, I mean it's nice getting the links working because you could then just use those links as you do with a transputer and program the Pico in, in C. Or, and what I'm going to have a go at doing, is getting an emulator running on here to emulate the CPU, use the PIOs to do the links and see whether I can get something that's very transputery. Now the advantage of doing that is that you can run Occam 
on the emulator which uh, gives you quite a lot of parallel programming constructs the whole thing is set up to run on multiple transputers or one transputer so that's the plan I'm going to try to uh, try to actually get this working and uh, emulate a transputer with the hardware links so uh, <laughs> here we go there's uh, another chip that I'm going to use in uh, at least the first stages of this project and this is the IMSC 011 and uh, there's a couple here I've got these they're fairly easy to buy they're easier than transputers to buy and cheaper and uh, this is what it looks like it's actually a link adapter so there's a transputer link on on one side of it if you like with the link in and the link out and uh, it provides an 8-bit output port and an 8-bit input port so if you send a packet on the uh, link on the link in it will come through to, and uh, the data packet the data bits will appear on these eight data lines here the Q lines whatever's attached to this on this side can then acknowledge that uh, there's a line taken high when it appears when the data appears there's a, a valid line the uh, device that's attached to it reads the data when it's valid acts it and then the next one can appear and so on you just handshake that way the input port is very similar uh, whatever's attached here sets the data up says it's valid and then once it's been act at the other side the act line goes high and you can send another one uh, the acts and the data packs packets are um, multiplexed on these lines so the data goes out on the link out and the act comes in on the link in so there's a sort of crossover now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, attach on this side one of these which is an Arduino mega embedded so I'm going to use that to send and transmit data over here and um, the uh, IMSC 011 will convert that to the link protocol and then um, that will go off to the Pico and uh, I'm going to need level shifters the Pico is 3.3 volts this is 5 the IMS C011 is also 5 volts so I'm going to need some sort of level shifters here fortunately uh, there's only two lines so that will only need two level shifters there's another signal that's needed here and that's a clock there's a 5 megahertz clock that comes in here and uh, that's used for all the timing internally. It's not synchronized with the data on the links. It's just used to generate clocks, so that's quite nice. Any old five megahertz will do. And um, that provides me with um, a transputer link here, which isn't something that I've created. This is this is going to be uh, this is going to be the InMOS or ST, there's two versions of the chip, I've got an InMOS one here, there's an InMOS one there and an ST one there. After ST bought InMOS they carried on for a little while, so some of the chips are branded ST, some of them are InMOS. And um, I will have to create something on the Pico that works with this chip, um, so that will that will be a good good gauge of whether I've got the uh, the transputer link working properly. So uh, that's what I'm going to have a go with next.